Devil May Cry Peak of Combat is a unfortunate, disappointing mess of a game which, considering its mobile gacha, really shouldn't come as a surprise, but the annoying part is it nearly wasn't. I mean, it was always a mobile gacha game, but it was one that looked so much better than it had any right to be, and one that I was genuinely a little bit excited for. Not that I expected it to outshine any of the mainline games, but with Itsuno currently working on Dragon's Dogma 2, it was nice to see that there was something new on the horizon just to keep things fresh after so many replays of DMC 3, 4, and 5. The game has actually been in development for quite a while now, with Young Chan Game, or rather Nebula Joy as they go by internationally, acquiring the rights back in 2017 before DMC 5 was even announced. And it's really impressive for a game to make me 180 on it so many times and have its own rise and fall arc before even coming out. But alas, to talk about why DMC Peak of Combat is so disappointing, we must first talk about DMC Pinnacle of Combat and everything it could have been instead. Back in December of 2019, sometime after DMC 5's release, we got our first look at actual gameplay for Nebula Joy's mobile DMC game subtitled Pinnacle of Combat. And while it definitely looked a little rough around the edges, what was shown was actually surprisingly promising. It had style, it had environments inspired from both DMC4 and the reboot. They showed off weapons and enemies from DMC3. And the small clips that were shown off not only indicated that things like weapon switching and the entire movesets of weapons like Rebellion and Agni and Ruja would be there, but also that a few new moves like a weird shadow clone combo and an aerial stinger in high time would be available as well. I was cautiously optimistic, which is honestly saying something considering the platform it was coming out on, and as time passed and more trailers were shown off and betas were released, that cautious optimism became optimism. There were definitely some concessions that had to be made here and there given the platform, such as having to rely on the DMC reboot style of performing stingers and high times due to the hold-based lock-on just not being possible on a touchscreen, and a few similar cutbacks had to be made to the style system as well by watering it down a bit and just integrating the styles into Dante's moveset. Trickster just became a dodge and air dash button now, and stuff like Prop Shredder and Rainstorm are integrated as part of the weapon's base moveset. It's a sacrifice to be sure, but it is what it is, and for the most part, everything you'd want is still there. The story, setting and such was also looking to be kind of interesting too. Pinnacle of Combat seemingly takes place a few months after the end of DMC3, with Dante still rocking the leather boob strap design he had in that game, and is taking on jobs alongside Lady. The two of them seem to have some sort of run-in with a fellow demon hunting guild, and end up taking on a job involving some magical child as well as reincarnations or copies of bosses and enemies from DMC 1, 3, and 4. The story itself is pretty basic and just a contrived way to reuse old enemy movesets and designs, but honestly, I'm already expecting very little from a DMC plot as it is, so I'm not really that bothered if the narrative of a mobile game spin-off whose canonosity is ambiguous at best is a little bit weak. What I do like about it, however, is by showing stuff like other Devil Hunters, it helps helps expand the scope of the world a little bit compared to the other games. As for the presentation, the game didn't really improve that much over time. It definitely looked like it had the right spirit of things, but it just always looked a little bit off. Character models looked a little uncanny valley at times, animations not taken from other games such as the ones in cutscenes could look a little bit stiff, and stuff like voice acting and sound mixing was quite frankly all over the place in terms of quality, but hey, it's a mobile game, they're gonna run into some walls and limitations, and at the end of the day, it is what it is. Up until this point, Pinnacle of Combat had been a China exclusive mobile release, and it was a nightmare to try and get into the beta if you wanted to give it a go. But it was around about this time where both the official worldwide release and the PC port were announced due to some unexpected fan demand. 
things were looking pretty good. Nebula Joy was putting out something that was much better than expected and seemed to be listening to the enthusiasm and acting on it. Not only were we getting the game now, but we were getting a version that would likely remove things like the hitching and the input delay that the mobile release did admittedly have, as well as the potential to enhance things like the visuals and such. Not to mention the obvious improvement of having proper controller support. Now, after this announcement, we actually went a really long time without hearing an awful lot about this worldwide release and PC port, but it wasn't like the game wasn't being updated. Over the next year or so, there was multiple betas and eventually the quote-unquote final release of the game out in China. And throughout the next couple of months after that, we had tons of content patches, like new weapons for Dante, like Nevin, Beowulf, and a weird version of the Arbiter Axe from the reboot. Lady was made into her own playable character, carrying over pretty much all of her kit from DMC4 and more. And of course, roughly around about the same time as DMC5 Special Edition's release, they added him. With Virgil being added to the game, motivation gauge and all, as well as a bunch of new things like weapon variants with new moves, different costumes, and also things like a PvP in a co-op mode being available, we were getting to the point where I could say confidently, damn, Pinnacle of Combat, you may be kinda jank, but you're shaping up to be a cool ass video game. After all, it was in a pretty good shape already and they were only going to keep adding stuff and polishing it over time before the western release eventually came round. All I wanted and expected was a pretty cool new DMC game that, while derivative, was just some new simple fun to keep things fresh and it was seeming like that they were going to deliver above and beyond. And it's around this point where I started to become a bit of an optimistic champion and apologist of this game. I talk about how, yeah, it's a mobile game, but it's shaping up to be pretty good. And oh yeah, there's gacha stuff in there, but it's relatively minor. Besides, it's a Chinese mobile game. That's just how they make their money out there. It's either this free to play style or we don't get a game at all. And besides, it's not like they're taking away resources from the main DMC team anyway. They're working on Dragon's Dogma too. Sadly, it was at this point where they proved me wrong. Very, very wrong. So the name change from Pinnacle of Combat to Peak of Combat actually came a little ways before this announcement, but I've kept off from saying it just for clarity's sake. But in early mid 2023, Nebula Joy announced the 2.0 release of the game, which for clarity's sake, I will also just call Peak of Combat. But this 2.0 release was a complete overhaul of the game's combat and mechanics. And it's the most deflated I have gotten from a game in a while. My motivation skydived. I really don't like being negative about stuff usually, especially on this channel. Hell, I'll even defend DMC2 and DMC Devil May Cry in their own way. DMC2 introduced a lot of early concepts that would make it into later titles and be improved by them. And the DMC reboot, while having a lot of problems, was still better than a lot of action games that come out, especially with the Definitive Edition. You just have to make sure you skip all the cutscenes or play in Espanol. DMC Peak of Combat's 2.0 patch, however, killed my family. Let's start with the good things that were added. Nero becomes a playable character, and now active character switching is a thing. Very cool sneaking in some uh, Salt Spy influence in there. By the way, if you are a DMC fan, I very much recommend Assault Spy over this crap. It is a little bit janky, but it was made by one dude, and it's still very fun and just oozing with charm. Now let's go over all of the things that 2.0 removed, gutted, and reworked. Weapon switching? Gone. Guns? Gone. Besides Lady. Input attacks? Gone, and have been replaced with special moves that go on a cooldown. You now have to wait before you can perform another stinger. And now a lot of your moves and combos are strictly tied to the gacha element. You basically have a collection of different flavours of easy automatic based on which weapon variants that you've unlocked and equipped from the gacha system. It still looks flashy, like some sort of 
spectacle fighter, but there's next to no player expression when creating combos, which is really the core of DMC and character action in general. The core of Devil May Cry's combat is your toolkit. Guns don't do much damage, but they're there to either keep you and or your enemy airborne, and also keep those combos going when you're too far away from anyone to do anything. High Time is obviously your universal launcher for air comboing, and Stinger is there to close the gap between you and the enemy, but also work as an easy knockdown to give yourself some breathing room. And with all of this stuff being more limited to things like specific characters and cooldown abilities, all this is really doing is limiting that toolkit for the sake of it. There is an argument to be made that these changes were put there for casual players, so they're able to engage with that stylish combat system too, but this is what the easy auto setting is for, and it just seems kinda pointless to make one of the most standout-ish action games on mobile, and to announce a PC port for it that would very easily fix many of its problems that it does have, being stuff like controller support and performance problems, whatever they may be, only to change everything fairly last minute and basically lose everything that was kind of unique about your game. What they've essentially done is turned it into a reskinned Honkai Impact 3rd clone, and, and with its honky mimicry, it means that the gameplay is now much more tied to that gacha system. Now revolving around what weapons you've upgraded and brought with you, and making sure you get your bonus damage from constantly switching characters, and the whole thing has become more of a numbers game opposed to how well you can hack and slash and dodge making enemies much more resistant to general combos and taking out many of the launch and air combo systems in the game is all in service to pushing you more towards those gacha-isms, so you'll probably spend more money. Honkai Impact 3rd does have its own gameplay loop and such, and that's fine if that's what you want, but building up a game that is such a weird and wonderful amalgamation of multiple past DMC games, a series that prides itself on fun, complex and in-depth combat, only to good it all out and water it down is just so disappointing and such a waste. And the thing is, is Honkai Impact at least has a fairly decent story with a ton of fun lore etc to go through, at least from what I gather, whilst Peak of Combat is giving us Frank the Demon Hunter. At this point, I think I'd rather just play Devil May Cry 4 Refrain, I think I have my old Gen 1 iPod Touch kicking about somewhere. Now, I am self-aware enough to realise that we're stepping into whining territory here, and I mean, it's not like I'm being forced to play it by any means, but I do stand by the fact that I can be annoyed and heavily disappointed with the whole ordeal, considering how excited I got for a very tangible thing that did exist and wasn't just stuff I was making up in my head. But at the end of the day, these are probably honest, hard-working people who worked on the game, and I do kind of feel bad about shitting on them so hard. At least, I did until doing research for this video brought to light that this company kinda has a tendency for being a bit scummy. Now, a lot of what I found could just be described as Discord drama, but looking at how their approach is to dealing with this sort of stuff really helps back up the claims of previous employees and other people who've interacted with the company. As a mobile game focused joint, this really doesn't surprise me, but Nebula Joy have quite a reputation in China for being a simply awful place to work. Treating devs like cogs in the machine and then throwing them out and firing them as soon as they say anything that isn't sycophantic. Which is a sentiment that is upheld within their community as well. Instantly banning anyone who has any sort of a complaint with the game and protecting known assholes within the server just because they're active there and also putting money into the game. To a certain extent, I do kind of get this. After all, a game's Discord server is partially designed to advertise the game, but it takes about two seconds looking at this shit to realise that all they really want is an echo chamber, and when this extends to how they treat the devs, it, you get a pretty clear picture of what we're working with here. And thanks Sparta, I haven't worked with them since I did have a few opportunities where contact creators could work with them, but it seems like any that have done have kind of been scammed by the studio. Outside of all of the echo chamber stuff, there's also a good number of examples of competitions hosted by Nebula Joy, 
with various prizes being offered to the winners. And it seems like none of those winners have actually received any of those prizes. People, however, have noticed that Nebula Joy have very eagerly used stuff like the footage from their combo video competition in their trailers. So yeah, all in all, my point is I really don't feel bad shitting on the game too much since the hands that slaved away on it are probably not even there anymore. And the people who've made all the decisions that I don't like are probably the reason why they're not there. As I said before, I really don't like making negative videos like this, but I know that not everyone has been keeping up with this game's development too much, so I wanted to make sure that a lot of the positive reception that came out upon announcement and throughout the early years of its development, the praise that people like me and some other people were giving off, is not for the game that we ended up getting. And it's also just a usual PSA to remind people that Gacha is never worth it. I know I put out a fairly positive video on that stuff a little while ago, but about two weeks after I finished it, my enthusiasm for Honky Choo Choo just died. And if you are adamant of at least giving it a go, then by all means, sure, but I'll remind you that there's plenty of other better small budget character action games out there that you could be playing over this one that are actually pretty good. Assault Spy is one that I mentioned before and I absolutely still recommend it, but some other good examples are games like Solstice, which is a little slow to get going but is still very good and goes for dirt cheap on sales these days, and also a title called Unguard, a game that is actually arguably not really character action but it does have a very similar feel, and with a big encouragement on environmental combat it is really fun and just as cool and stylish in its own very different way to DMC or Bayonetta. So yeah, with all of that being said, just remember, friends don't let friends play gacha games, or Idea Factory games, or Final Fantasy XIV. The moment they download that free trial, you've probably lost them forever.